Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we are joined by a wonderful, wonderful friend who I've actually just met a few months ago. His name is Daniel Ihu. He is from JTB Hawaii. And Daniel, I have to say, uh, we have developed a friendship over the last little bit that uh, really has been uh, wonderful. It's, um, it all started off because JTB and you mm. approached me to speak right. at a conference right. that you had for the Honolulu Festival. And right. we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I was fascinated at how you and uh, all, everybody who worked there we're, we're so interested in mm. making something about the Holocaust mm. a very, very real and uh, demanding uh, work for all of your staff. So right. it was it was absolutely wonderful. So before we get started, mm -hmm. tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Um, so a little background about me. Um, I was born and raised in Okinawa, Japan. I, uh, my father was with, with the military, so we were stationed out in Okinawa when I was born there. Uh, my father was from Maui, so I would go back and forth, Maui and Okinawa. Uh -huh. So I had little ties of uh, Hawaiian heritage and uh, Okinawan culture. So um, I'm a little mixture of that. So when I came out here to live out here in Hawaii about, about 10 years ago, and you know, I was here for, as a university student. student so yeah, I was trying to get my studies done, trying to figure out where I wanted to live, uh, where I, what I wanted to do for my career, and as what and whatnot. And somehow. I'm here today, right here, you know, like working for JTB. Um, How long have you been with JTB? Not even a year yet. Actually, next month I'll make a year. Uh, wow. Yeah, prior to that I was doing a bunch of other marketing jobs as well. But um, yeah, this time around, uh, working for JTB was a completely different, uh, come from a different background, so it was completely different for me. So uh, I figured I could learn something, and tourism is a really big industry for Hawaii. So I figured it'd be uh, good to learn as I... Uh, as I, hopefully I can make, make, take something out of it and make it my own as well. You know? Well, I think for our international visitors, because mm -hmm. we have a lot of people that see the show mm -hmm. all over the United mm -hmm. States, all over Europe and mm -hmm. Asia, tell us, uh, JTB stands for Japan Travel Bureau. Correct. Tell us a little bit about the demographics of JTB. Demographics right now, I, I would say about 98% of our customers are from Japan. Uh, we have, <clears throat> annually, we have about 435,000. Last year we did 435,000 people. Uh, that you hosted here in Hawaii? Yeah, here in oh Hawaii, my God. throughout the entire year. So we have wow. a lot of people coming in daily. Even That's today, almost a half a million people. Yeah, so even wow. today we had, I checked the numbers, I believe we had about 780 people that arrived just today through our company's uh, travel. Wow, and yeah. do you arrange everything for them? Um, our company does, uh, not me personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be kind of crazy, but like uh, our company is a um, destination management company, so they take care of everything from all the tours, hotel, common recommendations to, um, yeah, you name it, we do it, ground transportation, and they have everything covered for our visitors. One thing that I always notice, Daniel, mm -hmm. is how many Japanese weddings we have here in Hawaii. I mean, oh, man. Is that part of what you guys do? Um, we do have some uh, divisions that do take care of wedding. Uh, not so, it's not as strong as it used to be prior, uh, but they, they still do focus on weddings. And uh, yeah, the Japanese market loves, the, um, there's a yearning or kind of like admiration to have a wedding out here in Hawaii. So it's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of, it's something that the Japanese people really, really want to do in their lifetime, I believe. Yeah. You know, I think uh, when we when we think about the Japanese mm -hmm. tourists coming mm -hmm. to Hawaii, I have to tell you, I started with the Japanese tourists mm -hmm. in 1976 when I opened uh -huh. up my restaurant here. Oh, really? And this is something you probably won't remember because uh -huh. I don't think you were born No, yet. not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, uh -huh. when I had the New York Deli, uh -huh. uh, we had Japanese tourists coming in. Mm -hmm. One guy held a flag, mm -hmm. and there were 20 or 30 people uh -huh. behind them. They'd all come into right. my restaurant with uh -huh. a preset menu. Uh -huh. Everything was preset because uh -huh. there was no, most of those people mm -hmm. don't speak English at that period of time. And they would eat, and they would leave, and I would have... Uh, bunches of them coming in, uh -huh. groups of 20 r led by a leader. That's no longer around. Obviously. No, no. So uh, how has that changed? Um, I believe so, like, uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, I believe uh, a, a lot of it, traveling, uh, it's all about information, experiences. Um, in, in, in today's world, it's all about information. We have the internet and, I mean, all these informations you could get from social uh, networks and um you know, Instagram, so that's a good platform for uh, especially people my age right now. I think whenever they plan out their uh, vacations or wherever they want to travel, they, de they definitely Google where they're going to. If it's people in Japan as well. Right, of yeah. course. I yeah. believe that's... Uh, 
um, that's definitely changing the way people uh, perceive uh, our destination. Let's per even Honmu itself, I believe, is changing a lot of people. Before, Japanese people, like you mentioned, like they would just have a group. They'll take them to a shopping destination, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. next sightseeing destination. However, now they just want to break off, kind of want to do their own thing. Hey, I want to go check out that restaurant by myself, or I kind of want to go rent cars. Or they rent cars now, so they're which they never used to do. No, right? no. So now they've become a little bit more independent, which I I think it's a good thing for. Um, the the travelers now the visitors now to be a little bit more independent and then uh, getting that organic experience almost I think that's a good uh, experience. So has JTB had to adapt yes. to the change because yes. of social media and the internet? I believe I believe there's a little bit more changes in the future that uh, JTB will have to adapt to because uh, of course in the days of the information is moving very very fast. It, uh, so there's a lot of things that we need to play catch up with and also keep up with as well. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's, it's, it'll be an interesting uh, market for the tourism industry in the coming, coming years. Uh, yeah, we, we still uh, have such great respect for the Japanese mm -hmm. tourists here mm -hmm. in Hawaii. We still have almost every store has mm -hmm. somebody who speaks Japanese. Right. Every store has Japanese mm -hmm. signs. It's something that I think is, it's, it's inherently uh, Hawaii Japanese being a partner together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost, uh, that dynamic is really, really interesting too. Um, because like in, uh, I'm fluent in both languages, so when I was uh, when I was a university student, when I was walking around town, it it would always like kind of um, it would confuse me almost uh, walking down the streets. Here I am thinking I'm okay. I'm in Hawaii, you know, like all I should be only hearing like English and whatnot. But no, walk down Waikiki or Alamana, all you hear is almost Japanese. Just flies into my head. And it's just like wow, it's like this is really interesting, you know. Like um, so everybody really does cater to the Japanese market because they are the um, of all the visitor markets, I believe the Japanese do have the higher spending um, uh, capacity over here. So I do believe a lot of the businesses do cater to that market. You yeah. know, I know you're right mm -hmm. because the Japanese market has been here for so long. Mm -hmm. What makes the Japanese tourists come back over and over again? See, that's a good question that I want to know too because uh, this is... That's your job. Right, right that's my job to yeah. figure out the answer, but it's like, well, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind right, of deal, right? right? right, but, right. Uh, it's, also, it's also, I believe it's very interesting because um, you would think that, okay, uh, people will be kind of not bored or they'll be kind of be like, okay, let's find a different destination next, you know, but uh, Hawaii is still one of the places in the Japanese people's minds. It's like, it's, uh, it's one of those like goals to kind of go there once in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's, uh, it's, it's ingrained in their social, um, uh, but how would you say, like, uh, it's not, not almost like a status symbol, uh, right, I believe, right, to come right, to, to come, Hawaii yeah. to vacation. So, but the Japanese are going all over the world. Uh -huh, I see them in uh -huh. Vienna. I see mm -hmm. them in mm -hmm. Indonesia, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Chinese are coming quick, too. Not right. so much to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to have as many mm -hmm. as our HVB, Hawaii Visitors Bureau, thought mm -hmm. that right. we were going to get from China. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the stability of the Japan market is absolutely incredible, mm -hmm. especially with the wedding business. Yes. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, without without uh, asking you for specific numbers, has your business been going up or is it is it it's stable? A, it's it's stable. It's definitely stable. Uh, there there is a lot of factors that come in, uh, especially uh, international travel and all the uh, economics, the factors that comes into play. Especially if it's Japan, what's going on in Japan and what's happening here. And uh, you know, it's not just economics; it's about politics as well. What's going on in the world? And you know, uh, Japanese people are more sensitive to like the news is what's and they l relatively live in a kind of a safe country, so whenever there is a uh, news about some sort of uh, international conflicts or whatnot, then they do tend to kind of fear fear. Uh, so they don't want to go out like to maybe Hawaii, where it's or they may want to stay somewhere it's close to maybe like the Indonesia or somewhere, mm -hmm. or Korea or Seiju, Korea, yeah, right, Island, right. Yeah. And they're, they're very very uh, uh, very dependent on what's going on in the world and. I don't really necessarily think it's the only deciding factor, but I believe it's a very big deciding no factor. Kidding. Right, wow. right. Well, before we, we take our first break, mm -hmm. I, I want to try to talk a little bit about the Honolulu Festival right, right. and how we met right. and all that stuff. And uh -huh. maybe we could bring up some pictures at the same yeah. time uh -huh. before the break. So uh, I got this call from you and said, we have a few <laughs> hundred, actually a few thousand people coming to the Honolulu <laughs> Festival. Would you like me, uh, would you like Seymour right. to come and speak? Mm -hmm. And what was the impetus for that? Um, so 
it was my first year. I'm still my first year with the company, and they put me on board for this whole new festival. I've, uh, I've always been kind of interested in kind of seeing like what it's, uh, what this festival is about, and what we do, and everything. And then uh, I was put on a special project for the Sugiya Chunin project. I had no idea who this person was, who this figure, what he did in history. So you know, I just went and watched that movie and. And I was just, you, didn't yeah, you? and it just hit me, and I was just sit there and like, wow, what just happened? You know, it was like almost like a what just happened moment. And I had to kind of understand what what he Fred or what he did. So I did a little bit of study on my own, and I figured there's no way that I would be able to translate or interpret this story to the mass. So I needed someone with from the Jewish faith, or you know, someone that could actually teach me or guide us in the right direction, so we could actually tell this story properly, and then. And somehow it yeah. led us to yeah, yeah. And, and then um, and I'm really really grateful for that day. Like yeah, I'm like everything turned out to be more than I expected. And what you yeah, everything is great. It was it was a really great experience for myself as well. We really we really bonded with that experience. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it a little uh -huh. bit more after uh -huh. the break. But I just want to uh, let our viewers know that the uh, that Chiune Sugihara mm. uh, was the consul for Lithuania. And at that point in time, uh, he, uh, over a period of a couple of years, gave 3,000 Jewish people visas to be able to leave Lithuania before the Nazis came in. Mm. And it was one of the most amazing uh, uh, pieces of history of the Second World War, where now there's well over 100,000 people alive who we call Sugihara Jews, because they are alive because of him. We'll take our break and we'll continue a little bit more after that. I'm Seymour Kazimersky with my guest Daniel Ihu from JTB. We're on Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be back in a minute. Aloha. You cool. can join you the Hawaii seconds. Farmers Grab Series Grab some water. Every and... Thursday from 4 to 5. Uh, did you finish them? And I'm your co-host Matthew Johnson here with Justine Espirito. Okay. And please and end with a picture with that whole so mass of people in the audience. To use as a forum to get to know all the movers and shakers in agriculture in Hawaii. So you and cover kind of their background in history. Oh, my, well well, mine is all about uh, their perspective on what so. they're doing and <coughs> I mean, also the future for you know, some people are extremely specific. Uh -huh. So join us every Thursday. You can tweet in your own comments and your suggestions and be a part of the conversation at Think Tech High. And we hope to see you every single Thursday. Welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we just took our break, and before the break, we were talking about something that Daniel and I uh, got involved with. Well, I only got involved because <laughs> of Daniel, and that was for me to be the guest speaker at the Honolulu Festival for the Sugihara, um, uh, for the Sugihara film called Persona Non Grata, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, viewed at the film by a couple of thousand people, actually. Yes. It was amazing. We had, oh, there, you can see a picture right. of the auditorium, and you could see me speaking there. It was absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Because most of those people were Japanese. Yes. And yes. I was thrilled that after my talks on both Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday, mm -hmm. how many people came up to talk to me? How many people wanted to share their mm -hmm. story about a relative that they knew during the war, mm -hmm. after the war? And it, it, it just gave me um, an amazing feeling that what I was doing all this time mm -hmm. over the last 20 years really rubs off. Mm -hmm. Not just on the kids that I educate mm -hmm. and the soldiers that I go to see, uh, but also on Japanese people, you right. know, that they uh, really respect that a man like Sugihara mm -hmm. is finally getting the due respect that he deserves. Right. And Sugihara, by the way, is now at uh, Yad Vashem in Israel, and he is one of the righteous, and he has his own place oh, as one of the amazing. righteous, right next to Schindler, uh -huh. right next to many of the other people who helped Jews escape from oh, the Holocaust. That's amazing. So, yeah, I, 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 I was thrilled by that, Daniel, uh -huh. and I thank you from the bottom of my heart oh, for you. allowing mm -hmm. me to participate mm -hmm. in this and helping make that uh, that festival a success. No, that's, no, really, thank you for my part, too, because, like, uh, yeah, you really completed that <coughs> entire project for us. Uh, there's, I mean, I had to have help from so many different people to make sure all the story was right, you know, like everything can get interpreted correctly, um, and making sure the message, the final, it was, the bottom line, as long as the message got to people, which it did because people did come after the presentation, like, 
I mean, I think it speaks volume when the when the guests are saying thank you to. I was just a presenter. I just sat there and presented. The, uh, you know, like the all I really needed to do is press play. But they said thank you for that. And then honestly, that to me was like it spoke volume because they actually took something out of this show. You know, out of this presentation. And if they can apply that message into their daily lives, you know, whether it, it can be anything small, but if they can apply that, I believe we actually did what we needed to do, like, and we accomplished our goals. So I think I, I, so I walked away with some sort of, like, you know, like accomplishment, if you will. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't, uh, uh, you shouldn't put yourself as the button pusher. You're <laughs> much more than that. Uh, in, in my mind, this could mm. have not gotten off to mm. the wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, start that it did. Mm. The middle and the finish was mm. absolutely amazing. Mm. I, I just couldn't... Um, you know, I speak a lot on mm -hmm. the Holocaust throughout mm -hmm. the year, mm -hmm. some 20, 30 times mm -hmm. a year. And and this was one of my favorite ones really? because it was truly an amazing, an amazing uh, time that I had mm -hmm. with direct, the audience was so into it, mm -hmm. you know, when they viewed the movie. By the way, the movie, the movie is called Persona Non Grata. And I don't, it's not available in film, but is it available in, in Netflix? Or um, where, where can people find it? I believe you could purchase it on um, Amazon. Amazon? Yes. Okay, so you I, can buy I it did, on Amazon. I did find some Blu-ray copies the other night uh, when I was doing some, uh, I was looking through some other films as well. And yeah. I, I did come across it. Ah, yes. terrific, mm -hmm. terrific. So let's get back to JTB. Yes. So JTB, mm -hmm. uh, your role in JTB, mm -hmm. can you describe it? So um, my role is to be a marketer. Uh, I am in the sales and marketing. Uh, I take care of a lot of media um, um, more of the local side clientele is what we have like uh, it could be retails or it could be restaurants how do I get them how do I increase their presence within our customers uh, mm. you know perspectives um, so it's it's more of getting to making sure their story gets known to our customers. So mm -hmm. that's I'm more of a storyteller, if you will, I guess. And yeah. do you have direct contact mm -hmm. with the customer or with um, the agents? With the agents, yes, I do. With our clientele, yes. uh, when I mean clients, it's more of our business, our local businesses here. And I, I want to my my personal goal is kind of to have like more of the. Um, the local businesses to flourish within the tourism uh, industry, uh, especially with the Japanese market. Uh, the Japanese market does have a tendency of liking the brand names. Uh, they like they like going to the bigger stores. The Louis Vuitton, right, 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 the Gucci, yes. yeah. and then uh, little by little, it is changing. So I want to make sure that like that shift can get. Uh, we could put the spotlight into the local businesses that way. It, tourism can actually do like you know it can make a complete circle it just starts with not just with our hotels and the, um, the airline companies but then the local businesses if they can get something out of it too then I think we can all we can all walk away with being happy I believe yeah. so but uh, you know JTB also mm -hmm. is very philanthropic mm -hmm. and they do mm -hmm. a lot for Hawaii can yes. you tell us some of the things um, so my personal ones that I really like uh, that we're involved with is uh, something we do with the Hawaii Ecotourism Association. Uh, now, what they focus, what they do is um, they focus on the natural environment, uh, protecting the Hawaii's uh, natural environment, how we can, how the tourism industry can thrive within it without actually damaging what, what we have naturally and what, in our culture as well. Um, and part of what they do is. Uh, that we were involved with the planning of the coral woods, which I think is oh, really cool. Oh, that's on the big island. Yes, yes. So uh, their their goal is to um, their word their mission is to plant at least one point three million uh, coral trees by uh, throughout their um, in their what you call with their organization. But I think that's really cool because then they're trying to restore um, what what Hawaii had. The, the environment not only that but then what can we learn how can we educate our future our kids and how can we sustain this and how can we thrive and how can we everything just ties into really well it's not just taking from our land anymore how can we thrive with it how can we economically grow with it how can mm -hmm. we you know, how can we sustain it for the future so i think these are really important things that um that our company is actually taking the initiative to, and it's not just taking from, it's like actually building on top of the environment as well. Excellent. I think that's very, very good. And hopefully, we do have a lot of ground transportation, and uh, it is one of our goals to uh, make it eco-friendly, uh, to go, all of our buses to go um, 
eco-friendly by within the next five years or oh, so. Oh, wonderful, yes, wonderful. Yes. Well, I have one for you that I'd like you to think about. Yes. Uh, as you know, I'm involved uh -huh. in many different organizations, yes. my yes. music program yes. and all that, and one of them is my foster youth program. Mm -hmm. And um, we have an operation called You Are In Charge, which is part of the Hawaii Foster Youth Coalition. Mm -hmm. And I would like JTB, and of course I'm putting you on the spot here, <laughs> but I would like JTB to get involved in that because we have 30 buses that stop mm -hmm. uh, right next to our location. Really? And we want to get our foster youth more involved in the daily life of tourism. Mm. And what better way than to have a retail store mm. where these kids can work, mm -hmm. where they can buy and they can sell and they mm -hmm. can do things mm -hmm. directly with the tourism. Us, and mm -hmm. we might ask you to get involved with that. that. That might be that might be something. I mean, I can't. I would love to say yes right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, believe it or not, you just said yes, and you don't. That know concept. It. That concept <laughs> is great. I love it. Yeah. I mean, uh, that concept is great. Like. Uh, it's, it's, it's like giving back to the community. That's what we exactly. need to do. And then, um, exactly. Yeah, that's something that we should build up on. Yeah. Uh, to me, that is a very important mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of what um, what we all need to do. All of us who have made a living in Hawaii mm -hmm. or are making livings mm -hmm. in Hawaii. I, I love the echo idea that mm -hmm. you're doing. I, I'd love to see more tourists rent less cars mm -hmm. and go into the forests and into the mountains. Mm -hmm. That's much easier on the Big Island right, and on right. Kauai mm -hmm. and Maui. But here in, uh, in Honolulu, mm -hmm. where we're choked with cars mm -hmm. and choked with buses mm -hmm. and all that stuff, it would be so much better if we could get the tourist market more involved in that because it would give them another reason to come to Hawaii. Correct. You know, get away from just mm -hmm. the sun, sand, and surf mm -hmm. and maybe uh, start thinking about what else Hawaii has to offer. Right. And then not, it's not just here with the experience. Maybe they could take that back to their own homes and then they can, you know start something there as well like absolutely so absolutely yeah. I mean we're uh, you know we're looking at uh, various ways to make Hawaii mm -hmm. a more attractive place for mm -hmm. tourism and obviously uh, there comes a point in time where all of us and this is going to be the subject of another show by the way uh, how many more tourists can we have in Hawaii mm -hmm. at what point is there a saturation at what point do we say uh, we can't have any more cars on the road right. now there are certain places in the world like Bermuda that restrict mm -hmm. the amount of tourists they mm -hmm. have in the Galapagos for instance mm -hmm. they only are allow 750,000 tourists mm -hmm. a year and that's all there is to it and they keep it very clean and mm -hmm. pristine and all that stuff here in Hawaii we have a tendency to have the developers mm -hmm. uh, pretty well have their say and decide how high how right. many and how big and my feeling is that's something that we have to get people like you guys involved we need JTB mm -hmm. to be part of the sustainability mm -hmm. of Hawaii over a longer period mm -hmm. of time. So I'm hoping that that's something I'm going to call on you on to help me with. Hopefully I could be there for that. <laughs> good, 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 because I think that's a, a, a mm -hmm. critical issue for mm -hmm. us to look at. No, really. Now, tell me a little bit about you yourself. What are your plans for the next couple of years? Next couple of years, well, it's always about self-improvement and what I can, with, um, from what I gain, I want to make sure I could return to a community as well. So whatever, whatever I learn from here on out, I want to make sure I can spread that back out to our community, especially our kids through the future, you know, like I want to make sure they could do good back for the community as well. So. So it's just drawing a big old circle. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. I learned from you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm not sure if you learned it from me, but it's, it's, uh, it's the right thing to do, Daniel. Right. And right. I think uh, you and JTB and mm -hmm. all of us have to make sure that we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And the right thing is to make sure that the generation after us gets at least a mm -hmm. decent um, a decent place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not too crowded. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Hawaii. Not right. too crowded. And is still um, able to make a living without mm -hmm. it being too expensive. Yes. So all of us have a responsibility mm -hmm. you know, to do something like that mm -hmm. in whichever way that we can. Uh, from my personal perspective, I agree with you 110%. <laughs> the kids, right. uh, whether it's foster youth, mm -hmm. the way we just mm -hmm. talked about, or other kids, if we could help them mm -hmm. make the world a better place, mm -hmm. or as I always quote, see the light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. then we'll have a, a country or a state or whatever it may be that has less crime, mm -hmm. that has more appreciation, mm -hmm. that has greater gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the, the fortunate part about being able to do something like this mm -hmm. and realize that you're doing something not for just yourself, but you're doing something for everybody. Right. So I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. Well, thank you. Uh, it was just wonderful to have you and right. to share the few minutes we uh -huh. have together and tell 
the Seymour's world <laughs> and all our and all our visitors around the world mm -hmm. what uh, what JTB does right. and what you are doing personally mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I look forward to working with you again yes and hopefully we'll do something in the next uh, year or two mm -hmm. to, to help kids of course right? because that seems to be one of your passions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, for all my friends out there uh, I will be leaving uh, for Europe this week and we're going to be doing a show from Germany in the next two weeks. Uh, it'll be a Skype live show if we can organize it with our producers here, and I think it will be possible. So I just want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful uh, month ahead without me uh, directly here in Hawaii, and I hope all of us just live a happy, healthy life. Aloha from Seymour's World on ThinkTech Hawaii. Perfect. Wow. That was cool. <laughs> the, the, the half an hour went quick, huh? Yeah, that was half an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Bye -bye. yeah. <laughs> Amazing, huh? That's cool. Yep. It's terrific. So this is where I returned there. Yep. <laughs> and now I have to run up to to Tokyo. I have to speak to Tokyo. Oh, wow. There's 350 people. Always busy, huh? Always busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, today I think we'll have about um, 700 because we're in the main auditorium and